Welcome back, Storm fans. I am Brent Cook, and today we're playing Modern Living End with some brand new cards from Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth. In front of you is the list that I've been playing the last few months. I've really, really enjoyed it, but there's some new toys to test, and that's what we'll be doing today. But how do we add them? This next list is was my initial impression. This is what I was first thinking, and this is the first one. Generous Ent. It's a five in a green, so six mana total for a 5-7 tree folk creature with reach. When it enters the battlefield, it creates a food token and then has four cycling for one. So you can discard this card from your hand, pay one mana, search your deck for a forest. So it grabs the basic forest in the face of Blood Moon, but it also gets a breeding pool, which is a forest, but also an island, or even stomping ground, so that way you can get red mana. Pretty cool. So here it provides some mana fixing, but what do you cut to add this? Well, we ended up cutting three lands because if you look here, 16 lands, this list had 19, and then we ended up cutting the fourth living end. I've always loved four living end, and I played this list in a league, and I'll be honest with you, I got smoked. But the one nice thing about this list is traditionally even before this three basic list that i was playing with colossal sky turtle in this slot people used to play brazen borrower in one main deck copy of subtlety so it was just eight green cards supporting cyborg force of vigor and endurance but when we come here this list has 14. okay so that's pretty sweet which means that you're allowed to play more copies of force of vigor and endurance since you can reliably cast them for free now that's actually a huge upgrade for this deck Okay, so what was wrong? Two or three living end just isn't good enough. I constantly drew two of them, and it was a real hindrance in my ability to win the game. So I did love the sideboard, though. I thought the sideboard was great. It's just three living end I've always had a problem with, and I don't know. Um, I just didn't do well with this. So late last night, I was discussing with my good friend Ryan Wallagora, who's won... A modern showcase with living end about how we could possibly even push this a little bit and we came up with this list in front of you right now this is what we will be playing today it's also playing elephant another six mana value creature five and one red for a six four trampling elephant okay so whenever it attacks another target attacking creature gains plus two plus oh into and trample and trample until end of turn and i guess it's not attacking. I misread that. So it's whenever it attacks another creature you control gains plus two plus so oh, and trample until end of turn. Um, theoretically, you want it to be attacking, but it doesn't have to be. So then you have the ability to mana cycle for a mountain. In this deck, that gets Stomping Ground or one of your two copies of Steam Vents. So we went down to 14 lands. So it's two less lands than even this list. And, well, five lands less than what we started from. But this list has four copies of Living End and two Sky Turtles. A lot of people are cutting this slot, and I think that's kind of a mistake. So Sky Turtle provides you a lot of flexibility against things like Main Deck Thalia, Lavinia, Eidolon of the Great Revel, uh, Dothy Voidwalker. The list goes on and on and on. And on top of that, once again, it's a green card for Endurance and Force of Vigor. So I think cutting these is sort of wrong. So what we ended up doing is we cut two lands and then we also cut the Waker of Waves. I've never been super in love with this card and it just makes sense to me to cut it for things that are more easily cyclable that guarantee your success for being able to cast Violent Outburst and Shardless Agent. I've kept so many hands with two lands of Waker of Waves and have missed on land three, and it's just so punishing because you're taking an entire turn, your entire second turn, for a chance at a land. And here, you can guarantee that third land for a single mana between Oliphant and the Generous End. So, I'm a huge fan of this list. This is what we will be playing today, and uh, I'm excited. I hope you are too. I truly believe that these five cent cards from Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth have broken this deck. I think that moving forward, Modern Living End is going to be tier one. I mean, it's like low tier one, high tier two right now. I think this deck just got drastically better. Let's see how it plays today. Thank you for watching, and uh, let's go get match number one. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. It's match number one and we are on the play. Okay, so here we have double street wraith. No other lands. No land cyclers here either. I think that this hand is pretty risky because you only need one cascade effect and here we have three. So we'll just take a mulligan. This hand is very good. We will keep this. Keep and we'll bottom a grief. Opponent's on five cards. I th think I want to lead on the Grief. I was initially planning on holding it, but if they're playing something like Amulet Titan and this could hit an Amulet, it could really pay dividends. Instead, they're on Rakdos. Let's get rid of that Thoughtseize. We'll play the Island and pass the turn. Bloodstained Mire for a Blood Crypt. Okay. And there's the monkey, Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. On their turn, we'll cycle the Striped Riverwinder, drawing into Generous End. So this guarantees mana number three for Violent Outburst and a creature in the graveyard. In our upkeep, let's cycle this so that way we don't draw into one of those lands. We need a red source, so we're going to grab the Stomping Ground, draw another Violent Outburst. So that means that we're Thoughtseize proof. Pass the turn. The Ragavan connects, we'll go to 18, they get a treasure token, and they hit Shardless Agent. These in Pyromancer, okay. Orcish Bowmasters was the discard. We draw into Architects. I'm going to put a stop on our opponent's draw step, because we're going to bring back all of our graveyard at that point. Okay, and now we will Violent Outburst, and the opponent concedes. Beat. Let's get rid of that stop while we're here. Okay. So that was game number one. Generous Ent looks so good there. Okay, so in this matchup, I like having ley lines for all of their discard. Subtlety hits um Gothy Voidwalker, so that's actually pretty important. And then you want some number of force of vigors for ley line of the void. That's a lot of cards coming in. We're at 71. I think you can get rid of force of negation pretty easily here. And then, I mean, you're still at 67. There's a lot of cards to come out. I just checked my sideboard guide because even sometimes I forget. And I brought out Grief in this matchup as well. And then that leaves us at 63. I don't know if you necessarily need all four copies of Force of Vigor. I think we can shave one of those. And then we'll get rid of a couple copies of Architects. Let's submit this. Okay, this seems pretty good. We don't have a Cascade creature, but we do have Subtlety, and we have ways of getting more mana. I'm in. The opponent with an aggressive mulligan to five. They might just be mulliganing to Leyline. They do not. We have double answer for Dothy here. Early Thoughtseize. So it could be the Elephant, because the Elephant guarantees a second land here. And they do. Okay. Draw. Force of Vigor. We'll play Breeding Pool. Ouch. Past the turn. They have Polluted Delta. And Blood Crypt is back. Two mana for a Dothy. I'm going to respond here. Let's cycle a Striped Riverwinder. And let's Subtlety this Dothy. Basically, we just want to fill our graveyard so that way this matters less. Draw for turn. There's a land. We'll pass the turn. They did put the Dothy back on top of their deck, so I'm expecting them to recast it here. They do. We'll fetch. Grab a stomping ground, I guess. And then we can cycle the elephant. And now any cascade card we draw gets the job done. All right, so they have a single card in hand. We already have a full graveyard before this Dothy Voidwalker was relevant. And there's our cascade card. Wow. Right on time. Couldn't have even, like, you couldn't have planned this any better. This was just so good. Nice Dothy Voidwalker. 
boom match number one we got there i love it wow these creatures are just so good so if you look at this we have two extra fat creatures in our graveyard when it could have just been subtlety and striped riverwinder that was the difference here you're seeing it match number one i really do believe in these cards these land cyclers have really elevated the deck let's go win match number two Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. It's time for the second match, we're on the draw, and while our hand is essentially a mulligan to five with double living end, so would you keep a five card hand with just cyclers in it? You would, but I think that we can just do a little bit better here, so we're going to send it back. And this hand is delightful, we will keep and get rid of a copy of Force of Negation. Let's party. So we got to keep a six card hand instead of a five card hand by using the mulligan button. You love to see it. Hers is Bobble, so this looks like Murktide. And no turn one Ragavan. I'd love to see that. Okay, so at this point, we're really just looking for Violent Outburst. We would take a Charlotte's Agent, but Violent Outburst is better due to Force of Negation. We'll play the Misty Rainforest and pass the turn. I'm going to search out Basics, because our opponent could have Main Deck Blood Moon, and I am not interested in losing to that card. And they search out a Basic Island into Consider. He's in Pyromancer, so they might not be Murktide. I mean, they still could be, but he's in Pyromancer is a little bit odd. On our opponent's end step, we will use the Misty Rainforest, like I mentioned, grab our basic. Cycle the Riverwinder. We find Ottawara. Not a bad one. Another Force. We'll play the Stomping Ground. And Stomping Around doesn't cycle that many cards in the deck, but it does cycle all of our land cyclers. So on our opponent's end step, we can go get the basic forest. And then from there, we are Blood Moon proof. And there's a Ragavan. Okay. So they're not Blue Moon. I thought for a second they could just be Blue Moon with this, but it looks like they're Merc tied with Season Pyromancer. They play a third land. But cycle the end to thin the forest out first, so that way I'm not cycling into it with our Striped Riverwinder. Cycle, cycle. Another force. Well, if we ever find a Violent Oppers, we will be well protected. I'll play the forest. They know about it. So I, I had a dilemma here. Do you play the Steam Vents untapped, taking two damage to represent Hardcast Force? Or do you play the land that they know about? I'm hoping that the Murktide deck doesn't have anything worth forcing in their main phase and that this way the decision works out. I guess the other downside, theoretically, is if I cycle into another cycler, and I can't cycle off these lands. Alright, Curator of Mysteries to the Graveyard. Street Wraith. Let's go to 15. Another land. So we're flooding a little bit here. Living End. Pass the turn. The one upside to flooding like this is that we will be able to pay for Spell Pierce if we ever do draw a Cascade card. Aggressive iteration. I think that's one that's worth using a force on. Ouch. I'm at 12. Blue. We will pay for cancel. Base spell pierce. Okay. I am fine with that. So expressive iteration. They find a consider. Alright, so they're giving us a window here. If I can draw into Shardless Agent or Violent Outburst, this could be game winning. They put a Murktide region to the graveyard off that consider, so they have three creatures in graveyard. Hmm. Okay. It, it does give us another redraw. We're almost 33% of the way through the deck. We need a Cascade spell. We find an Elephant. Play the Steam Vents. Pass the turn. Hers is Bobble. And they're going to pass holding up Double Counter spell. I could cycle the elephant here. I'm choosing not to. There's a world in which we hard cast this. There's our agent. But our opponent has it all. So I don't think we're supposed to. Let's just search. Grab that last steam vents. We are trying to create a window. 
our opponent's at nine cards in hand here. They could be pressured to tap low, and if we if they do, that does give us a spot. They play Ragavan. They have eight cards. So this could be Spell Pierce plus Counter Spell. And I can't pay for that. But what I could do is return the Ragavan, and then they would have to discard two cards. Okay. They discard a Pyromancer and a Ragavan. Okay. So now we have two Cascade cards. I think I'm going to continue to be patient. Our opponent has shown that they're unwilling to tap lower, so I'm pretty sure they have two counter spells. If I can draw a Violent Outburst, we can overload them and make sure that one resolves. But playing one or two a turn isn't going to be enough. An end step dress down. Okay. Another copy of Urza's Bobble. Also, we're over 33% of the way through the deck. We have not found a Violent Outburst or a Grief. Grief would also be very good. Okay. Draw. Another Agent. Okay, so I can triple spam. Cast the Living End. They'll cast Counter Spell. And we will cast Force of Negation. So this is exactly what I expected to happen two turns ago. And now they're at five cards. So next turn we can try a pair again. And by a pair, I mean Shardless Agent and Force of Negation. Alright, so now they're at four cards, drawing back up to five because they used an Unholy Heat. They found land six. This is going to be a Merc Tide with double counter spell back up. Pretty scary. Yep. It's an 8-8 dragon. I would love to draw Grief. Pretty please. Draw. Nope. Play the land. Let's try another Shardless Agent. Living End. Another counter spell. Hard cast Force Negation. You have two cards. And it's a main deck Force Negation, Pitching Merc Tide. Okay, so currently they're Hellbent. This does give us an opportunity next turn. The opponent attacks. We'll take eight going down to two. I cannot block. This creature does in fact have flying. They're at 12. We drew the fourth living end. That was the worst possible draw in the deck. It was a one of. It was a one of. Ah, oh, That is just devastating. We just lost. Ah, oh, I whittled my opponent down. I was patient. But ultimately, maybe I waited a turn too long because we drew the fourth living end. That was just so... It was 1 in 34 odds. Wow. They play Fiery Islet and immediately draw a card. That hurt. Okay. So there's really a few different ways we can board in this matchup. You can not sideboard it at all, which is what I do sometimes. Or you can bring in a few copies of Force of Vigor. This is usually pretty good against some licensed curse. And our opponent's last list actually has a pair of hearse in it. So I think that we do want to bring this in for the vehicle. And what to board out? I don't think that Colossal Sky Turtle is actually super good in this matchup because bouncing Ragavans and stuff just like isn't really where you want to be. So I think we can afford to shave those. And we're only going to bring in two copies because they only have two copies of hearse. They are a Blood Moon list, by the way. So theoretically, you could also hit a Blood Moon. But... Hopefully we're not in a spot where that matters. I will try this. Keep. We're going to lead off by playing Misty Rainforest and then passing the turn. Ideally, our best draw is likely something like Force of Negation to protect this Violent Outburst. We're going to go grab Steam Vents here. Because we have the Generous Ent for Basic Forest. We need a Red Source, so this all makes sense. They use the Bobble, sure. Cycle Riverwinder. Draw another creature. Draw for turn. We'll pass. The opponent plays an end step copy of Consider. I mean, our hand's looking pretty good right now, but you never know what your opponent's sitting on. Dash Ragavan. Okay, so this could mean that they have a Spell Piercer or a Foster Storm in hand. If we can draw a. But we should go cycle for the forest. If we can draw a black card for the grief, it could be a protected turn three. Ragavan connects and it's Shardless Agent. We didn't really need that. We will cycle another copy of Striped Riverwinder. Another land, but we need a black card here. Draw. Hmm. Okay, so we can do end step untap. There's their third land. 
Ooh, I missed a I missed a possible window last turn. Um I could have force invigorated the treasure. Did I have another green card? If I didn't cycle the end. It looks like I was short a green card, but I could have used force of vigor on treasures to create a window. This time they just cast the Ragavan. Interesting. That means that they have double interaction. Let's cycle a Curator of Mysteries. There's a black card for our grief. So I just want to talk this through. So if I end step, kill a treasure token, hit Shardless Agent, or Violent Outburst, untap grief, but I would lose if they had like Spell Pierce Fluster Storm. Basically, two pieces of one mana interaction. Or if they had Counterspell Spell Pierce. I don't think I like that line. I'm going to just untap. Another Violent Outburst. Okay. I'm going to pass. So, mana, I don't think is going to be a choke point for them anymore. We go to 13. They had a Misty Rainforest. Ooh, the Hearse. That's brutal. Okay, we're going to let that resolve. We'll fetch, grab Stamping Ground, I guess, and we'll attempt to kill these. Exile a Violent Outburst. And they play Counter Target Spell. Okay. End step, let's attempt to Violent Outburst. Living End. At the moment, this would get back two creatures because the Hearse could exile two in our graveyard, and we only have four. They remove two. Living End? Spell Pierce. Okay. Three cards currently in hand for the opponent. Another Grief. Okay, so we'll Grief pitch Grief here because I could then cycle the Architects for another creature to come back. All right. What does Grief find? A Force of Negation. So now we can cycle this Architects. Play our land. Charlotte's Agent, Living End, we'll Architects them, the Generous Scent Trigger, and then Grief, and the opponent concedes, sweet. Alright, so we've gotten game number two. Resubmit, no need to change anything. This hand is fine, we'll keep. I mean, I'd love to draw a Force of Negation or Grief, but this hand is reasonable. Uh-oh, turn one Ragavan? Not good. Their best opening, especially on the play in a post board game. Another Violent Outburst, okay. They swing, we'll fetch. Grab our basic. Shardless Agent. They could play it. And they do. Okay. What did you find? Expressive Iteration? The best possible card they could have hit? Uh, yay, yay, yay. That's not good for the home team. Let's cycle a Curator of Mysteries. Another Generous Ent. We draw another Curator. We'll pass the turn. They attack for four. We'll go to 13 life. They exile a land. We didn't want that anyway. And they choose to pass. So we will cycle a Generous Ent. We'll go grab probably the Stomping Ground because that gives us a red source for this Valen Outburst. And then we'll cycle Curator. Once again, we were looking for Grief or Force of Negation, and we hit. So now we have Outburst back by Force, Untap, Outburst. Grief, Grief, Grief. Mm, wrong black card. Okay, so we have two copies of Living End in our deck, and we need them both. And step they consider. They put a Season Pyromancer to the graveyard. Another consider. Filling Murktide Regent. Okay. In their upkeep, let's try Violent Outburst. I'm, I'm not expecting this Living End to resolve. We milled one Grief there, so there's three Griefs in the top of our deck somewhere. We really need to draw a Grief. Because if this second Living End off Violent Outburst is countered, we just can't win. Are they considering letting this resolve? They counter spell. We will force of negation. Living End? Oh my, it happened. A little surprised by that. They discard a pair of lands. Okay. Fiery Islet. Do you have another Murktide? Looks like they do. That's why they let it resolve. Okay, Grief, please. I think I'm just going to take a blind draw. I could cycle in my upkeep, but that doesn't work well with the Scry Triggers. 
what to do, what to do. I think we play this land tapped. And then we'll pass the turn. Went out with four cards in hand. We're in a little bit of a stalemate right now. So if they swing out, I can double block a Murktide. And then block Curator on Season Pyromancer. So I would take six. But ultimately, I'd only lose a Curator Mysteries in exchange for a Murktide region. And I don't think that's a trade our opponent wants to make. Unlicensed Curse. That is very obnoxious. Yeah. They do not attack. We'll gain three. Draw for turn. It's a Striped Riverwinder. We can just pass here. No need to do anything. They activate the hearse. Our opponent wants to go to combat. I will block with a Curator of Mysteries. Interesting. Nothing else. On their end step, we'll cycle a Striped Riverwinder. We do get two Scry Triggers. We don't need an Architects. Another Riverwinder is fine. Draw off the Riverwinder. We'll cycle again. Force of Negation. It doesn't really help us here. That can go on the bottom. Land can go on the bottom. Take a draw. They activate the hearse. That's fine. Let's cycle the elephant. So the problem is that you can't stack this so that way it's a meaningful exchange because the the mountain cycling is always on the bottom. Grab the steam vents. Okay. Take a draw. Another land. Okay, so we will pass the turn here. Next turn, we could theoretically hard cast this generous end. I don't know if it would resolve, but there's counter target spells that in their deck that answer it, and they have three. Grief. Let's cast a grief. Opponent plays a dress down. I mean, I get to keep a grief now, though. We'll pass the turn. They consider. They mill another Season Pyromancer. Okay. Our opponent going to combat. Interesting. So I think the move here is to throw everything in front of one. So that way if they have an Unholy Heat, I don't get blown out. They want to deal six to the Ent, which means they have another removal spell in hand. Oh! The Hearse on themselves! Okay. I did not see that line. Okay, so I go to seven. On their end step, we'll fetch. Grab a breeding pool. Draw for turn. Three wraith. Do I really want to go to four? Is there a difference between four and six? Honestly, I'm not sure. Let's cycle. We don't need another violent outburst. That can go on the bottom. Like I said, we don't need another violent outburst. Draw. Charless Agent. I'm going to attempt to hard cast the end. Please resolve. They have three counter spells in their deck. Maybe Archmage's Charm? Okay. That puts us in a tough spot here. I think this is the only winning line. So if they have removal spell or another creature, uh, we lose. Our opponent just GG'd me, so I'm I'm guessing that we lost. The aggro GG. Yep. Oh, that's what I missed. The end step season Pyromancer. Because now they can crew the hearse and swing with both creatures. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Okay. Sure. So they just had it all. And that was match number two. Um, I mean, it was a close one. We ultimately just didn't win. And I think it came down to having a little bit of bad variance in game number one. Drawing the fourth living end with 34 cards left in her deck. Sometimes that happens in Magic. You gotta play through it, figure out ways of winning, and uh, sometimes you just don't. It, you know, it really is just like how the game goes. So we're one and one. I still love the land cyclers. I thought that they were amazing this round. Let's see how they fare in match number three. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game.
Around number three, we're on the draw. This hand is essentially a five lander, but it's a five lander that puts a lot of creatures to the graveyard. I think I'm actually going to keep this. Included Delta. Ooh, Rakdos. Okay. Channeler. Draw. Ding, ding, ding. That was a good one. Okay. Play the island and we'll pass the turn. The opponent gets in there. We'll go to 19. They play a second land. And another channeler. On their end step, we'll cycle a generous end. We want a thinner deck of lands before cycling the Stripe River Winder. Draw for turn. Curator of Mysteries. Ouch. We'll thin again. Go grab the basic forest. And then we can cycle a Stripe River Winder looking for a black card for this grief. No hit. But, I mean, that is a little bit of Thought Seize protection, so I don't mind it. They grab a tapped Blood Crypt. Ooh, so they're Shadow? Or at least I think they're Shadow? Call of the Ring. I'll be honest, I'm not sure what this does. So, at the beginning of your upkeep, the ring tempts you. Whenever you choose a creature as your ring bearer, you may pay two life, and if you do, draw a card. Okay. They mill a Thought Seize. We'll take two. They have three cards in hand. Black card for grief off the top rope. Let's see it. Nope. All right. So I think we're supposed to just jam a shardless agent here and see what happens. Cast living end. Do you have force of negation? They do not. And instead, we put 15 power and two food tokens. I'm sorry, 17 power and two food tokens into play. Unholy heat. So they do not have a ring bearer at the moment for the ring. Bloodstained Mire for Basic Swamp. Seasoned Pyromancer. Discarding a Shadow. So they are in fact Death Shadow. Another land. Let's get in there. B5 Ofum. Smash. They have to make at least one block or else they're dead. So the, currently they would take 10. We could bump it up to 12, but I don't think there's a meaningful difference there, so I'm not going to make that play. Instead, we'll take 2. I go to 13 life. And for 4 mana, I will put a Curator of Mysteries onto the battlefield. They now have the Ring Bear. And a Concession. Good deal. Death's Shadow. We saw Thoughtseize. Definitely think I want Ley Lines. I'm not sure if this is a Sky Turtle matchup, so we could probably take those out. And then we have to find one more cut. I think it's likely Striped Riverwinder. They get a little bit outclassed in this matchup. And you're not really allowed to board out the Elephant or the Tree Folk because they're a part of your mana base. So I think boarding those out is a huge mistake. You could, in theory, shave a Living End, but I'm not about that life. I love having all four. We've already seen it come up in this league twice, I believe, where I've needed all four. This hand is just so fragile. I think we could do better. This isn't bad. So we'll keep this. Get rid of a Curator of Mysteries. Let's try it. They bobble themselves. And it looks like they're going to pass the turn after that. So they wanted their chop card. We draw another copy of Force of Negation. Ouch. We'll pass the turn. They grab a Watery Grave. Blood Crypt and Unlicensed Hearse. I'm going to force that. We'll pitch another copy of Force. On their end step, we will cycle the Elephant. We'll go grab a Steam Vents. Draw for turn. Street Wraith. Pass. Okay, so they're currently at 14, 5 cards in hand, and they're about to get a third land. Interesting, they grab another Red Sword. Dragon's Rage Channeler, that's fine by me. And a Shadow. So, possible one mana interaction. Interesting. They thought twice about casting something here. Might have just been a Jew. On their end step, we will cycle the Ent and just grab our basic forest. I don't really want to lose any more life. Cycle the Curator of Mysteries. We find another Elephant. Okay. Cascade Spell. No. But cycle three wraith. And we'll go to twelve. Unfortunate. Alright, so we flooded out a bit here. Twenty-five percent of the way through the deck and haven't hit a cascade spell. 
Expressive iteration. Throw care opponent searches out a watery grave, plays a Ragavan dashed. So they're still representing a one mana counter spell in their hand. Ultimately, I can't do anything about that. If I draw a Cascade spell, I just have to play it at this point. And they hit a Striped Riverwinder off the top of our deck. Okay, so we'll use the Jenner's Ent. We'll grab Breeding Pool. Cycle the Elephant. Grab Stomping Ground. And at this point, we're up to the mercy of the deck. Draw? Not going to do it, so we flood it out in game two. Unfortunate. So I'm looking at some lists, and it looks like a lot of them only have the four Thoughtseize, so I'm second-guessing myself on these Ley Lines. We could bring back in a Riverwinder. I just don't love Sky Turtle in the matchup, so you could do two Ley Lines or two Force of Vigor. We did see Unlicensed turn. Maybe we'll try two Force of Vigor. Game three. Yeah, this hand's very good. Keep. I think we're going to Grief Pitching Grief, because you're not guaranteed to draw another black card. We'll take their Thoughtsea, so now their hand is next to nothing. Play the Misty, and we'll pass. Golding Tarn. Bobble. They target themselves. We'll fetch. Go grab a Steam Vents. And they'll shuffle in response. Got it. May I search now? Hey, we're allowed to search. Alright, Steam Vents. I'll go to 17. And I think I'm supposed to cycle the end here. I don't have strong opinion. Grab the basic just in case of Blood Moon. So they'll draw a random card. Living end. Not what we wanted. I'm going to cycle in my main phase in case I draw another grief. We'll cycle architects. Okay, pass the turn. They did not draw consider or else they would have cast it there. So between their draw step and bobble, they did not draw a one mana spell that they could play. And here they just pass. So they've had three fresh draws. I'm wondering if I should wait a turn and just cycle these. Try to find an another Grief or a Force of Negation or a Violent Outburst. I feel like just jamming there is a little bit reckless. They play one of the Blood Crypts. Okay. So their hand is mostly unknown at this point. Thoughtseize. So this was the punish for waiting. They did have three Thoughtseize left on their deck and they found one. They took my Cascade spell, surprise, surprise. Death Shadow. Okay, so we know two of their four cards. If I draw a Cascade spell, I will be putting it on the stack. Cycle a Stripe Riverwinder. We find an Ent, we'll cycle that to thin our deck of a land before cycling the Curator. Okay. Not ideal. Draw for turn. Max punished. So I had the choice of waiting on the Shardless Agent, and I chose wrong. So you might be looking at the games this round and saying, Bryant, you flooded out twice. I don't know how good these uh, cycle creatures are. I think they're incredibly good. And when you look at the deck, we're really cutting lands to add them. So you could say like, oh, well, like if you had more cyclers, sure. But we're not cutting cyclers to add in Ents or the Elephants. It's really just the the lands that are being cut for the most part. We cut five lands for five cyclers. If you look at something like um, Waker of Waves, sure, but that's a two mana card. And it's we've had a lot of draws that are like one land uh, cycle creature. And I, I've never loved Waker of Waves. So I'm not sure if I'd buy that argument. Like the Cyborg Guides, a lot of them are like board out waker waves immediately because it's just like not a great card in the deck. It's kind of clunky. Oh, that's brutal. We needed that. So now we only have six cascade cards in our deck. And they are now playing lethal. So they have expressive iteration and one unknown. Brutal. Okay, so my decision to wait a turn ultimately cost me the match here. Unfortunate. Uh live and learn. Maybe I'm supposed to jam and disrespect their entire hand there. Okay, we're one and two. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Let's bounce back in match number four. We're on the draw against a Ruga deck. 
We only have the one Cycler, but I think that this hand is just good enough. Having Force of Negation versus the Kruger decks is usually very good because Kruger decks often play Teferi, Time Raveler, and you need to make sure that card doesn't resolve. Sacred Foundry, okay. So I could cycle the Striped Riverwinder. It does take a Shields down for Force of Negation. But we have Grief. The only fear would be if they have double Teferi. I think I'm going to cycle. If they have double Teferi and I don't draw a blue card, sure. Alright, so Street Wraith, draw for turn. Another Violent Outburst. Let's cycle the Street Wraith. So we found guaranteed land number three. We will cast the Grief. Triggers. They have the big Teferi, but that's it. Leyline Binding has three types at the moment. Let's take the Binding. Their hand is extremely clunky, and they've missed their third land drop. We will cycle the Ent. Go grab our basic. Ooh, they drew ice. Okay. Now we have to wait a turn. I don't mind the Shardless Agent draw. It is a blue card to make sure that Teferi doesn't resolve. And the opponent concedes. Nice. Love it. So these are the matchups that we have four subtlety for, because you just get to make sure that Teferi just never resolves, period. Uh, I will say this. Being 1-2, I'm like, uh, maybe I'm second-guessing my sideboard a little bit, but I've been playing Mystical Dispute the last however long I've been playing Living It. And it's always been an underwhelming card because you really struggle getting to four mana. It hasn't been an issue this league because I've been flooding so much. But it's been tough to protect your combo with Mystical Dispute. So I haven't been playing it. This league, we faced three blue decks in a row to start off the event. I'm sorry, two blue decks in a row. Rakdos plus two blue decks. But it made me second guess not having anything in the board for those matchups. So like you could play two dispute, two subtlety. So that way you have a swap for a colossal sky turtle. There's a lot of different ways you can build your deck. And I could one, four or two, three this league. And I would still believe in these cycle creatures. I think that these are truly the best thing to happen to this deck in some time, probably since modern horizons to when it received grief and subtlety and all those other broken cards. But these things are such huge upgrades, and we're all trying to figure out how to make them work in the deck right now. So maybe you don't play Sky Turtle at all. Maybe these are two Waker of Waves. Maybe you want the two subtleties in the sideboard, or I'm sorry, the two Mystical Disputes in the sideboard. But if these turn into Wakers, then you would actually be rewarded for having four subtlety, because the only reason you wanted the Mystical Disputes is cards to swap with the Sky Turtle against Blue Deck. So there's a lot of decisions to be had. I guess that's really my point here. And now I'll quit rambling and preaching in sideboard. So we want to take out two Sky Turtles. They're just not great here. The matchup is all about Teferi. And then you can maybe board out one Living End here. They're a really slow deck. And we need one more card. Pains me to say it, but I think it's probably an architect. Or actually, let's just do a Riverwinder. Like, I love having a high density of black cards for my griefs. And Architects is a blue card for subtlety as well. So I think that card, it's a glue card. And people end up boarding them out frequently because I think they don't understand how less consistent your deck is when you have fewer of them. And there's a lot of different ways to play this game, but I prefer higher consistency within my deck, which is why flooding out these last few games has been rough. This hand is great. Deep. Our opponent has mulliganed all the way down to four. They play a turn one triome. Let's uh, see what they kept. Liv or, I'm sorry, grief pitching living end. Lotus field. Well, we'll be taking the force of negation. Ouch. Okay, our opponent doesn't want to play Magic, so we are 2-2 two and two with one match left to go. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round, we are on the play. 
Yeah, this hand seems terrific. Keep. Opponent mulligans the five very aggressively. Another thing that I truly enjoy about being on a four living end list is that you just have more black cards for grief as well. Oh no, we're playing the mirror. Um, <laughs> geez. Don't know what I'm actually supposed to do here. I think you're supposed to make them living end. One of the ways that you can win this match is just by casting your threats and really punishing them that way. Okay, so we'll search out a steam vents. Go cycle for a breeding pool. Curator, that was actually a very good draw. Because we want to hard cast this on turn four. They cycle the river winder. We're going to cycle our creatures first because we actually want to draw lands. We don't want to get stuck and not be able to cast this curator. So I'm going to cycle the architects now. And we hit the land. So on turn four, we can play the curator. This is working out pretty well for us. And our opponent won't be able to play their shardless agent because we have graveyard superiority. Sure. They grab a breeding pool. Grab the basic, I guess, because we want lands that we can search out with these creatures through the course of the game. We'll cycle the generous ent and then the elephant as well. They're pretty much just like never allowed to play their cascade spells. Like my graveyard is just so much better than theirs. Another land. Curator of Mysteries. We'll pass. They use a Waker of Waves. They use the Wooded Foothills. So we know that they have Shardless Agent and three unknown. And our upkeep will cycle the street rate, see if we can find another creature to cast here. We definitely don't want Living End. They can go on the bottom. Draw off the Street Wraith. Reef? Eh? Draw for turn. Force of Negation. So we can now fight over a possible Living End. But I think that this game is really becoming about hard casting creatures, and we don't have any creatures to cast. And here they have their own Curator of Mysteries. Surprise, surprise. Draw. Ooh, that hurt. Okay, so we currently don't have anything to cast so if this game ends up going down that road we're in trouble they have three shardless agents okay and they get a scry because i discarded them we'll play the breeding pool Wang. they accept the trade interesting shardless agent i have to imagine they're going to decline the living end but we'll see and they do okay come on deck cascade spell I'll take a big elephant. Boom! Bet you didn't have that on your checklist for watching this video. Hard casting elephants. Botanical Sanctum. So we know that they have two shardless agents and a random card. Yes! They concede to my elephant. Elephant dominance. Here we go. Love it. Alright. The mirror match. So subtlety ends up mattering a lot. Because the mirror ends up becoming a lot about endurance. So... We have four Endurance, and then a lot of people play two Leyline, so we probably want to at least respect it a little bit with Force of Vigor. Force of Negation is one of the first cards you should board out. And then I particularly don't love Grief in the Mirror. We can get rid of that, and if you're boarding out Grief, you can probably board out a couple copies of... Actually, hmm. You're supposed to board out a few Agents. Yeah, I like this. You could also board in one more Vigor over the third Living End, and I, if we think that our opponent has Ley Lines, that's not a bad move. Let's try this out. Beautiful hand. Keep. Ley Line of the Void. We have three Force of Vigors. Draw. Sky Turtle. Breeding Pool. Great Curator. All right, we have to find these Force of Vigors pretty quickly. Grab a Steam Vents. Cycle, grab Stomping Ground, draw, Agent, we'll pass the turn. They cycle Street Wraith, okay, so no Shardless Agent here, they have four cards in hand, we'll search, grab a Breeding Pool, let's start off by cycling the Street Wraith in case we draw into Force of Vigor, then I can get some creatures in my graveyard, we did not. Okay, I think I'm just going to untap and draw. 
There we go. Ouch. I'm at 10. This looks like an insta violent outburst. Sure thing. I do not have an endurance, so this is going to happen. Our opponent's attacking. Let's force a vigor the ley line. And we'll exile shardless agent. And then we can Colossal Sky Turtle, the Curator of Mysteries. I want them to tap out again. I think that's my goal here. We'll take three going down to seven. Instead, they cycle the Curator. We'll cycle the Generous End. Grab the Basic Forest. They have four cards in hand. I think I'm going to pass. We'll go to four. When it's at 12 life. They have four cards in hand. Let's attempt a Violent Outburst. Living end on the sack, let's see what happens. Interesting, no response. We draw another Outburst. So they're at 12, we have 12 power in play. Swing. So they'll go to 7, we're at 4. Do you have an end step Outburst? You do not. What is in your hand? Maybe you're planning on untapping into Shardless Agent? It's got to be the play here. And it is. So I'm actually going to allow this to happen because we can just untap and kill them. And our opponent concedes. So I think they realized that they were dead, even though, like, I wasn't bringing anything back. But we'll take the victory. We won the mirror match. And uh, we finished 3-2. So this list was ultimately fine. Uh, I think there's... Areas for improvement. So I loved the eight land cyclers. I think that they were amazing. Where I was less impressed was Colossal Sky Turtle. I think with how the format's shifting, maybe Turtle doesn't make as much sense. Previously on this list, I liked Turtle a lot because it brought up the green count for Force of Vigor. Here we already have increased green, crown, green count due to Generous End. So maybe Sky Turtle is less relevant. And if it's less relevant, maybe we could try this. I think that this will be the next list that I try testing. So we've moved two subtleties to the main deck. They hit Teferi. They hit Dothy Voidwalker. Uh, I think that they just make a little bit more sense in this list with how it's constructed. And you could play like more Atawaras, but it's so expensive. And I think that you'd rather just have the free pitch cast of subtlety. And with moving it to the main deck, you do get to open up two sideboard slots for Mystical Dispute, which is something we wanted uh, with the swap with Colossal Sky Turtle. But you get to maintain four subtleties against the Fairy decks or Amulet Titan, and then you get to play two copies of Leyline of the Void. So this is what I'll be playing moving forward. I still loved the creatures, as I mentioned, but uh, that's the deck list today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry that I drew the fourth living end. Clearly that was all my fault and that I flooded versus um, Bricks of Shadow. You know, I'll work on that for next time, but thank you for watching. Uh, thanks for bearing with my sarcasm and have a great day. Keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.